one of the biggest uh, competitive entrance exams are just around the corner, just in fact few weeks away. And there are in fact a lot of anxiety and a lot of questions in the mind of people. We are talking about the CUET and to answer all our questions and to ensure that students don't have any uh, apprehension or confusion in their mind, I am joined by the UGC chairperson, Mr. Jagdish Kumar, so thank you for speaking with us. Uh, my first question is that today, once again, the window for the registration for CUET ha has been opened. What is the reason? Were there actually some few complaints regarding? Is it why the registration has been opened again? There were requests from the students. Some of them, they said uh, they missed out the previous window. Okay. So to give them uh, a choice, uh, a chance to apply to uh, write CUET, so we have opened the window again. All right. Uh, so when we talk about uh, the registration, this was a reopening of the registration, but mm -hmm. you have seen the registration that happened last month. Right. Uh, were there any glitches? Was a smooth process overall? How? No, registration, there is absolutely no problem at all. This opening of the window a second time is only to facilitate the students to apply for CUET again. Okay. Right. And uh, how many universities so far has registered in the CUET and also um, has the minority institutions like the St. Stephen's, Jamia, mm -hmm. Aligarh Muslim University, we have seen that there were some uh, issues last year right. but this year uh, did you had a correspondence with them, uh, what is really the plan now, how many universities have registered with the CUET process? Oh, this time there is a phenomenal increase in the number of universities participating. We have closed to about 250 universities now and uh, initially we thought CUET uh, will be used only for undergraduate programs such as BA, BSc, BCom and other related programs. But now we have found uh, a large number of universities are also using CUET score for admission in engineering programs. So there is a huge participation and it clearly shows uh, that uh, many more universities in the coming years will use CUET because it's it's becoming now a national standard test for admission in undergraduate programs. Hmm. Uh, so when we talk about uh, these other universities that are colleges that I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, be it Stephens or university like Jamia or Aligarh Muslim University, mm -hmm. have they also agreed uh, properly to go ahead with the CUET? You see, for all the central universities, it is mandatory to use CUET score for admission in all the undergraduate programs. Mm -hmm. So if DU is using CUET because it's mandatory for them, mm. then all the colleges under DU also have to use uh, CUET. Okay. Uh, also, if you could give us a ballpark uh, figure, mm -hmm. uh, what is the registration of the students have been overall India, if you were able to get, in, uh, get a look into that, how many right. uh, students have registered so far? Um, it's uh, close to 15 lakhs. Yeah, yeah it's a huge number. Yeah. And the complexity of the CUET is that uh, unlike in JEE mm -hmm. or NEET, mm -hmm. here students can write multiple papers. Mm -hmm. So we have given uh, a choice to the students to opt up to 10 papers, uh, right? So even if you take uh, on an average mm -hmm. that each student is opting about four papers, mm -hmm. so 15 lakhs into four, uh, that means you require uh, 60 lakhs uh, slots uh, physical slots the students will be coming and the exam will be conducted from May 21st to 31st uh, in a span of a span of about uh, 12 days or so uh, and we need to accommodate all these uh, 50 60 uh, lakh slots in these uh, 12 days so that's the reason why we have now decided to conduct the exam in three shifts it will start at 8 30 and then it will go on until evening or so uh, and we are also making every effort to give the first choice of the city to the students okay. so that they don't have to travel longer distance. Mm. Um, but it is the uh, exam centers in, in for the exam centers, okay. right? If you are not able to give the first choice, then we'll give the second choice of mm. the city. All right. Uh, by three shifts, is this the first time that because I think last time it was only one? It was uh, uh, two shifts. Two shifts. Last time okay. it was two shifts, but this time it is three shifts. Three shifts. Okay. Right. Uh, also, when we talk about uh, the application that you're saying that over 15 lakh students have in fact mm -hmm. applied. Uh, what are the efforts, I think I have asked you this last time as well, mm -hmm. uh, but what are the efforts to make the entire process smoother, mm -hmm. uh, unlike last time, uh, are there more efforts being put in? Right. Also secondly, uh, when we talk about CUET, it is 
coming as one of the biggest exams, mm -hmm. uh, competitive mm -hmm. exams in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we talk about that, uh, is there going to be something new that should be expected by the students? Is there anything new? Because I think a month back I interviewed you mm. and this is a process, right? So right. you also talk to experts, you also, uh, so has there been any changes, that last minute changes that you're going to put in? From a student perspective, there are two things. Mm. One is the availability of the city and center as chosen by them in the application form. Yes. Uh, towards that end, we are trying our best yes. uh, so that the students do not have to travel longer distance. And we will also announce the cities that the students have chosen hmm. by 15th of this month. So the exams are going to start on 21st. Hmm. S in about s uh, you know, six days before that, hmm. we will be announcing the cities. So s if the students had to travel a little longer distance, they hmm. can book the tickets and be ready to go there. Yeah. And three days before the exam starts, we will then be giving the admit cards to the students. Okay. If somebody is writing on 21st, hmm. they will start getting the admit cards on 18th. All right. So they will also know in which center in that city hmm. their, their exam will be held. Okay. So on this count, uh, the students need not worry at all hmm. because the preparations are uh, in full swing. Hmm. And um, when the student actually goes to attempt the CUET, the second aspect is about the syllabus. Hmm. The syllabus, as I mentioned earlier, it will be only from the 12th standard yes. NCRT syllabus. Yeah. And uh, students at this time, um, they need to focus on preparing only for the 12th standard. And it's anyway fresh in their minds hmm. because they have written their uh, 12th standard exams also. Yes. Yeah. And it is going to be multi-choice uh, questions. And it is available in 12 languages. Hmm. So if somebody is not so fluent in English, they can choose their own uh, mother tongue among these uh, 12 languages. Hmm. So, um, and there is going to be a lot of choice. Hmm. Uh, in, 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 in each paper, we will be giving uh, 50 questions and the students have to answer 40 questions. There is a lot of choice also. Hmm. So students need not feel really anxious I'm about sure the examination. Uh, prepare, uh, your concepts have to be clear and practice applying these concepts, solve some problems, mm. and uh, revise what you have studied for your uh, 12th standard. And uh, have a time plan mm. how you want to prepare. You, you know, you have uh, another couple of weeks to prepare for the examination. Yes. Have a proper uh, timetable on uh, how you want to prepare for the examination. Hmm. Um, everything should be all right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you mentioned that there are going to be options, language options, around mm -hmm. 12 of them. Recently, UGC also have asked mm -hmm. all universities to um, you know, give the right to the students if they want to write right. in their own language. Right. What is really the logic behind this? And also, in CUET also, will we see that such any mother tongue language will be uh, used? Is that, is that the In CUET, currently, we are using 12 languages. Okay. So students can write in any of those languages. Okay. The other one, uh, recently, we have written to all the universities yes. to let the students write in their own local language yes. their examinations. Mm. Because often what happens is uh, for the students to use English language um, to express what they have learned in mm. English language sometimes may become difficult. Mm. So that is why we said you let them write in local languages. Okay. Because the um, purpose of examination is to uh, find out how much the student has learned in mm. a given uh, subject discipline. So um, that can be understood only wh when the student is able to express. Hmm. And that becomes much easier in their own uh, mother tongue or the local languages. Uh, right. Will this go for the technical subjects as well, science, maths? Because I can understand in any In any uh, area, whether it is a professional uh, subject or general subject, hmm. if the students are encouraged to write in their own mother tongue, um, their expression will be much mm. better. Mm. But at the same time, we are not saying that you, one should neglect English mm. because English should always be learned as a communication tool. Yeah. But it should not be used for learning purposes mm. because that is when all these inhibitions and lack of knowledge in English, that will not let the student to express uh, uh, clearly. Mm. And therefore, um, they may not uh, score well, they may not pass in the examinations. Uh, that doesn't mean that they have not really learned. Mm. So uh, with this, um, 
by writing the examinations in their own la local languages, we expect that uh, the student performance will be really reflected there. Mm. But do you think that this will become a mammoth task, the checking, uh, the professors? Could, do you think that this could complicate uh, things further with the checking part and the professors should also know the lo local language? So how are you going to deal with that? See, this kind of thing uh, will be complex if we are talking about, let's say, a central university yes. where students will come from all uh, states. Yes. Um, but in many state universities, mm -hmm. only the local students uh, study. Yes. And you also know that nearly 45% of our universities are in the rural areas. Mm. And nearly 60% of our colleges are in the rural areas. Mm. There both the teachers and the students, they know the local language. Mm. So that is why in uh, state universities and uh, in colleges, it is much easier to implement this. Okay. Uh, now coming to the Indian knowledge system. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing that, uh, uh, first my question to you is that there mm -hmm. was in fact a draft that was put out by the UGC right. on Indian knowledge system. Mm -hmm. uh, first I want to ask, is it going to be a mandatory in post-graduation and undergraduation? Do students have to take it up or is it optional? Well, giving more options to the students is uh, always a good approach in education. Mm. We should not be making too many subjects uh, mandatory to the students. Hmm. So study of Indian knowledge systems will go as one of the options to the students. Okay. Uh, that is one part. Hmm. The other part is recently we have also sent out guidelines to the universities yes. that can you also integrate Indian knowledge systems in the regular courses. Okay. Let's say you are studying economics. Hmm. Can you have a uh, few lectures uh, or one or two modules on how economy is viewed in our own okay. Indian knowledge systems mm. or mathematics mm. or it could be science. Mm. So in several areas, we can include some components of Indian knowledge systems mm. in our regular courses. Mm. Now the idea behind this is that uh, once the students understand that in India, you know, over a period of time we have made lot of contributions, mm. they will also understand that India is actually based on, a, it's a knowledge society. Mm. Uh, pursuit of knowledge is uh, is something that is intrinsic to our uh, culture and mm. our civilization. Mm. That is one part. And the other part is once they understand our Indian knowledge systems, because they are pursuing the modern knowledge, mm. modern sciences, they can also see how our Indian knowledge systems can be bridged mm. uh, with the modern uh, approaches of science and other knowledge systems. Mm. Because it is also important for us to see how uh, locally people are trying to find out solutions to many of the problems, mm. be it environment, mm. uh, pollution, or leading a sustainable life. Um, this is where our traditional Indian knowledge system can actually contribute. Mm. So um, it has both uh, sides. One is making our students realize that our uh, society is a knowledge-based society. Mm. And uh, two, connecting this with the modern approaches so that we can come up with pragmatic solutions for modern living. So while it is optional, the Indian education uh, knowledge system is optional, but at mm -hmm. the same time when you are incorporating it in the regular courses, mm -hmm. then it will become mandatory in a way. Well, um, in the regular course it is integrated in such a way, mm -hmm. uh, right? For example, uh, if I am teaching uh, uh, semiconductor technology to my students, mm -hmm. um, talking something about what Jagdish Chandra Bose has done. Mm. Right? Mm. It is integrating our own uh, Indian knowledge system into the modern science. Mm. So that is why I said that even if I am studying economics, mm. um, I can also try to understand how economy was studied in our own country. Mm. So you are integrating that with the modern knowledge. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so when we talk about uh, you know the Indian knowledge system, mm -hmm. uh, there is also a section of the society who have been criticizing this, mm -hmm. saying that. Uh, putting Vedas and Ramayana, Mahabharata or uh, astronomy, Indian astronomy, uh, putting this in regular courses mm -hmm. uh, is sh being, you know, going regressive. It's, uh, it, we should be going ahead, why are we going back? This is what some of the criticism that has been coming. What do you mm -hmm. have to say to that criticism? When we are talking about Indian knowledge systems, we are looking at uh, many disciplines. Mm -hmm. It could be metallurgy, it could be science, archaeology, uh, astronomy, 
uh, Indians have made uh, very significant contributions to astronomy, mm. right? It is in consistence with the uh, modern science. So therefore, I do not see any reason why we should not study our own sciences, our own technologies which have been developed here, mm. literature for example, mm. uh, India has made uh, huge contributions there uh, to literature and languages, uh, grammar for mm. example. Uh, so I do not see any reason why uh, anybody has to uh, criticize this mm. because uh, you see we need to keep our uh, minds open. Uh, we should not uh, make it too restrictive that we will study only this or only that. Mm. Let our students be exposed to uh, different kinds of knowledge systems and uh, since we are not making it mandatory, the students will decide uh, what is uh, good for them in their own life, in their own careers mm. and pursue those disciplines. One question related to this, uh, because mm -hmm. I was reading the draft, uh, there was also mention of how uh, the medical students mm -hmm. uh, should in fact be learning about Ayurveda. Uh, homeopathy. Right. So that has also in fact come as a criticism that mm -hmm. there are separate courses. If someone wants to go for an Ayurvedic course or a homeopathy, why is it that the modern medicine is being mixed mm -hmm. with Ayurveda? So uh, once again, the regressive part is being questioned here. Mm. Yeah. So you can view it as a multidisciplinary knowledge, mm. uh, right? Uh, see, when you say why we have to mix with the modern uh, medical knowledge, mm. Uh, we are going under the assumption that only the modern medical systems um, are, 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 are unique or yes, superior yeah. or any other systems. Mm. So um, as a scientist, I should keep my mind open. Mm. Uh, if there is something good in Ayurveda, if that is adaptable to modern science, um, we should adopt it. Mm. So why close our minds to say just because uh, uh, this system has been there over a longer period of time, right from ancient times to mm. modern times, uh, we should not add it with the modern science is something that uh, I do not find uh, is, an, uh, scient is a scientific uh, approach, approach to knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one final question is about the foreign universities. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is the status of the foreign universities? There were in fact a lot of talks that were going on. Right. Uh, there was also I believe a guideline which was supposed to come I think this month. Regulation. Uh, regulations, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, so what is the status of that so far? Oh, it is in full swing. Okay. The regulations are in the uh, final stage. Hmm. In another month or so we will be announcing it. Hmm. And the online portal also is getting ready. Okay. So the regulations and the portal, both of them will be launched at the same time. Hmm. And meanwhile, uh, we also have a large number of delegations coming from different parts of the world, hmm. whether it is North America, or UK, uh, European countries, okay. Australia, New Zealand. Mm. Uh, so many delegations are coming and meeting us. Um, they are very keen uh, to look at this possibility and we hope that uh, in the next one or two years we will definitely have uh, campuses being opened in our country. I want to end this with a message of yours to the students who are going to give the CUET exam. Mm -hmm. Just few weeks left now. Right. What is your message to them? Well, my message is that uh, there are many, many opportunities today, unlike in olden days. Mm. Uh, so you are attempting, uh, uh, you know, different kinds of entrance examinations, and uh, uh, focus on preparing well for the examination without any stress in your mind, and uh, go and attempt the entrance examination to your best abilities, and wait for the outcome to come. Uh, stress will not help you in doing better. Mm. So why you need to be stressful about the examination? So have a calm mind, take enough rest, do little bit of exercise and have a time plan and prepare well for the examination. Right. Be calm, <laughs> be well rested is the message that is being given by UGC chairperson to all the students who are going to appear for the CUET exam that are just weeks away.